So welcome everybody into another daily recap. Today is Friday, it's the 9th of February and it's now basically late, very late in New York. Uh, it's 8 p.m. European time and we're going to start having a look on gold. As you can see, we had uh, throughout the London session, not a lot of movement. Uh, we had to wait for the 8.30 a.m. Eastern for some Canadian uh, report. Uh, to give some sp mm, sort of some spice, to bring some spice to the market because otherwise the volume was very very thin it was not really re anything relevant I don't know if there was also s some news uh, that drove this price action but yeah, we can see that uh, price did not move that cleanly on the lower time frame we can start and then uh, look at the hourly and for example we can have this area over here that you can see multiple times it got rejected we might have an intermediate one at these lows over here and then yeah one that can be updated and be put over here to these lows and um let's have a look at the one minute we're starting from the london session you can see at the start of the Lon re london uh we saw this movement we, we saw this reaction at the hourly price action and price sensitivity area when i saw uh, this breakout, this three minutes candle being very, very strong, moving a lot. I mean, it looks a lot, but it's only 15 pips. Uh, when it, we saw breaking below these last lows, that's where I placed my sell limit over here. Uh, as you can see, it got activated in a very nice spot. The only thing is that I got uh, tapped out for like 10 pips at the very top of this candle. And after that, the price went down. But as you can see that from the actual entry, the maximum would only be like 11 pips. So after that, price would range throughout the whole session, yeah, a maximum of around 14 pips before then pushing down. Yes, but you can see that, I mean, the entry was good. I uh, I expected my trade uh, setup and the triggers, and that's, that's good enough. That's what I have to do. So the first one was one loss on gold. We can see that uh, further, uh, further down the road, further down the London session, we had the same price action. Basically, you can see this price action repeating itself with a break and retest of either the old lows, the one you can see on the one minute, giving us this possible trade idea and trade setup, which I did not see. Uh, I came back to the market when this retest already happened. But uh, another trade idea was uh, shown into the chart when the price broke below also this hourly PSA. It's, you can also use it without the hourly. You can see how the price is breaking and retesting below this last low. So if you were just using the one minute, that's that was okay, that was good enough. But especially with the confirmation that we're breaking below the hourly PSA, it is giving more confirmation of possible entry. This one would have run for around 30 or 40 pips. Yes, and I don't remember if I saw this one, but it didn't enter because maybe it was before New York opened. But yeah, this was a good positive trade idea. This one was, an, of course, a losing setup. Same setup, as, as you know, that's, uh, that's how it works, around 50% win rate. After that, at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, as I was saying, we had this spike up in volume, which was very aggressive. And... Uh, we had a further bounce from the same lows, but I mean, gold for me was not really looking, I was looking for possibly sales below these lows, but uh, I mean, the next few trades, I took them on GBP, JBY and GBP USD. But you can see that uh, if I just looking at the chart of gold, we have the break below these lows. For example, I would have taken this entry, any entry over there, this one would have been 10 pips, would have been another loss before pushing down uh, to at least 20 pips, which is the break even range. So you can see that an entry over here would have not been at break even, would have been actually a loss. And uh, only later on, that's why I was saying that the perception was quite erratic because it was not going very fluid. We had a spike in volatility, but it was not then, was not consistent after that, making new lower lows and lower highs. So also you can see that when the price broke below these lows over here yeah still only going around 24 pips 
before bouncing from an hourly, uh, another hourly PSA. And then, yeah, simply the volume and the momentum dying off. So that's, that was pretty much it on Google. A couple of setups, one loss, one win. If we go then into uh, GBPJPY, for example, you can see that um, this is doing the London. We had the some more volume during the pre-London time. Uh, I saw this one, but still, uh, if I had a, a, sell, a buy limit over here, would it not be triggered anyway? But we had some nice spike up in volume and probably maybe yeah, a retest of the hourly, maybe we're we'll giving a setup. But apart from that, you can see that uh, actually we had a correction of this movement, and, uh, but still would have not given, uh, would have not be, uh, yeah, given any entry as per my setup. Where I had my setup, that's where I actually took it, is below these lows. As you can see, uh, price is very aggressively going bearish right after this strong rejection at the hourly PSA. This one looks a very nice and interesting entry. So, so this is a, a fake out. Uh, this is taking advantage of a possible fake out. Of course, it's not guaranteed. It's a high risk, high reward entry. And the triggers are fake out from an hourly PSA. And these last lows break and retest of these lows for possible continuation down, at least maybe to retest these lows for around 20 centimes. That's something that I can see now. Of course, during live trading, you see this maybe price is now going to continue on the bullish side. But yeah, that's that's the risk that you should take. Okay, so maybe as you can see that I took a quite late entry, but you see that we have another very strong bearish momentum one two three four five candles going very strong and closing below these last lows they are making new lows and the distance to also that's another very important thing the distance to the hourly psa or the bpl is 16 pips so i know that i will be at least at break even and maybe i can get a chance to get a, a tp it so that's where i add my entry perfectly placed price goes a little bit uh, goes back, goes down, and then it goes around 10 pips. That's where I trigger my uh, stop loss at break even. So that's where also then it gets stopped out. I get stopped out, but at break even, price will go after that to around 8 9 pips of stop loss. So I saved up a lot of money. During the New York session, uh, I can see this spiking volume on that was happening in all pairs on gold and also here. We had a quick liquidity grab to these lows you can see that price actually respecting these lows grabbing liquidity at the hourly psa very very fast and then pushing up you can see that when we had the breakout from these eyes this one would have been a possible another entry exactly at this one would have been a very close call but yeah 4.5 pips of drawdown uh still with a 5 pips stop loss would have been a winning trade uh yeah 15 pips would have been with this spike up, would have been a, win, a winning trade. Uh, absolutely. After that, we had this further entry, which will give you uh, another possible winning trade. The same thing, you can see the same setup. And it will go further up, but only after retesting. After that, you can see that the price did not show much volume up until now, where it's stuck. So, GJ, uh, throughout the two sessions, gave a little bit more. Mm, setups one two three maybe some during the london session but yeah that's that's about it and we go now into the gpusd gpusd gave some more uh but i missed a few so as you can see here this is doing the london if we look at the left hand side uh we had a break and retest of the last highs and this will go to around uh six uh four, 5.3 pips which will trigger the break even and then facing this rejection from the hourly then goes back down as you can see that's the same thing you enter here because you know that at least there's a very high chance that you're going to be at, at least at break even <coughs> then everything if it breaks out above then it's golden after that i see uh, this bounce at the same lows so that's when Mm, the difference with GJ with the freak out happens but the freak out on GJ probably happened at this time on GBUSD yes you had the range to have at least a break even trade but not much so after seeing this 
uh, retest, I said, okay, let's see. Maybe if after, especially after these two very nice bullish candles, maybe we can have a retest of this area for possible continuation up uh, after this retest. Same thing uh, over here, maybe the fastening the more liquidity and that's it. Uh, the thing that this one would be immediately a loss because also the entry point would be melting down and with a pre pip stop loss will be uh, absolutely uh, melt down, melt through. The same thing that on JPY did not give much of a setup is this entry because now you have the confirmation where the price is moving down. I don't know if it's actually the same time where I took my, I took my entry, 9.53. On GB, JPY, uh, yeah, well, it was uh, half an hour earlier, and you can see that price giving a retest, confirming the the fake out, conf and giving the retest of these last lows, and then that's a very nice. I didn't, I saw it, but I didn't take the entry. Just the retest of to retest these lows would have been a winning trade, and after that, you see that you have a little bit more sketchy, but you have this entry below this candle. You have this one, which will go to break even and then push back. If it was held, then it will go to a win trade. But if you didn't, didn't have the stop loss and break even rule, after that, during the afternoon, I missed with this spike in volatility. I saw this uh, the retest of this area. I missed my first entry. I wanted to enter manually when the price was here, would have been a win. And then I wanted to enter at this retest for possible further retest over here, but I missed. Then. What, when did I take my entry? My took my entry when I saw the break and retest of these eyes and the hourly PSA as well, also these eyes as well. Uh, I took it with the lowest lot size and this was immediately a loss. I saw the pushback, I saw that price failed to make new lows. So sort of the, this trade idea, if it's making, is not making new lows, the price is not going down, but it's still respecting this area. Uh, that's okay. I see that maybe price was grabbing some more liquidity, so pushing back up, making a new higher high. So that's where I place us um, another very. This one was very very small, uh, 0 0.1 lot. Uh, this area just for back test because I wanted to take the entry. Instead to avoid, I said okay, better to lower the size, but I want to enter, and uh, yeah, got stopped out. Uh, the same thing. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not in much. To, to be at break even, but it only went around 3.7-3.8 pips of profits. After that, price really did not move that much. As you can see, overall, price gave some nice setups. I missed some crucial ones, as I missed the winning ones, of course, today uh, on all the pairs. I missed on gold, I missed on the uh, GBP, GPY, on GBP, USD. But yeah, that's, that's part of the process. It's not a problem. And now we're going to do the weekly recap. As you can see, this is February, because this is the start of February. We started with the 698, and we're now with a little bit of profits, around 17 euros. And uh, I just wanted to check if I didn't have these. Yeah, we did have around 4%. It means that today I only lost 2%, as you can see. And yeah, we are up 17 euros, 2.4%. It's okay, as you know, I'm just doing, I just need to take at least one trade a day. That's the rule, that's the challenge, that's what I'm doing. And for now, I have a 23% win rate, of course, it's not good, but with a very good risk to reward ratio. It's uh, above three, so that's very good. And that means that I don't need a huge win rate. I mean, you can see that with the 23%, I'm still profitable, e even if it's very small, but just imagine if I had a 30% win rate or 40% win rate, as I showed you, as I can see on the chart on a daily basis. So yeah, that's basically it for this part. Um, not much about any stats to say, of course the, the sample size is very small, 13 trades. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And we're going to, to keep going at it. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you this weekend for the backtesting videos.